Hi there all UG freaks! This is Christopher Dahl and today we're going to look at some Kirk Hammond inspired licks uh, and try to come up with our own stuff, stuff out of that as usual. So, could look something like this. style lick we're gonna look at uh, is a typical rock cliche which he does a lot as well as many other other players uh, and uh, it's this kind of thing we've looked at it before uh, what we're doing is we're bending on the 15th fret on the B string and on the 12th fret on the E string so we're bending the B string up to the same pitch as this finger. So what's cool with this kind of technique is number one you get a real dirty sound out of this kind of double stop bend. And number two is uh, let's say you have a backing or a riff uh, where you know you have a scale or you have a couple of notes uh, which you know ver work very well to solo with. Uh, let's say for instance we have a standard metal riff. Something like that. And we have these three notes which we know work very well over there. 12th fret, 15th fret and the 17th fret. Then what we can do is we can use this shape and make sure the index finger is on the target note. So if the target note is the 12th fret, we're going to place our fingers like this. And then go up to the 15th fret with the index finger. And then to the 17th fret. So what will happen is, um, the notes you're playing on the, with the ring finger will occasionally be out of the scale. And that's what kind of gives it the cool effect, because you're bending this, once again, you're bending the note up to the pitch which you know sounds good. <laughs> so, if we put it together, it could sound something like this. Say we want to uh, take this a little further and uh, do something uh, more original out of it. Then we can use uh, another kind of double stop technique, something which goes something like this. So what I'm doing there is um, I'm kind of plucking the E and the B string simultaneously with my middle and ring finger on the right hand. So something like this. So that gives it a real crazy squeak. So what's happening is uh, we're first doing a pre-bend. So something like this. Just a tiny little bend to make uh, this note on the B string go a little bit out of pitch and that what's, that's what gives us this sound which is a quite horrible sound so what I'm doing is first pre-bend and then plucking with my right hand and then I'm damping again with my right hand like that and then I'm bending up to pitch so Crazy sounding stuff. 
Okay, so let's look at another Kirk Hammett style pattern, which is, uh, I think, a little inspired from what he did on the first Metallica album, Kill Em All. <laughs> So what we're doing is actually a combination of two patterns. The first pattern is a 16th note pattern which goes like this. And the second pattern is this kind of thing. So what happens is, when we put them together, we get something like this. So slowly. And, and then what you can do is, instead of doing it with these three notes, we can add, or not, not add, we substitute the last note with this one, uh, which gives us uh, the, the flat fifth or the blues note. And I just want to say that that's a scale that Kirk Hammett uses a lot, you know, the standard pentatonic scale with an added blues note or you know, flat fifth. And this scale looks like this. apply the same kind of uh, pattern and mixing between two different rhythms uh, to wider arpeggios or scale patterns or whatever. <laughs> or just, you know... And, and try to fool around with those kind of things. So a third kind of Kirk Hammett style pattern which uh, Joe Satriani uses a lot too and uh, once again they are just a few uh, among many guitarists who use uh, these kind of cliche licks. Uh, it's this kind of thing. <laughs> because it works nicely when played you know very fast and it also works nicely when played slow uh, so in order to understand this uh, it, it really facilitates if we count to you know three because we're playing triplets so we can count like this one, two, three, one. Attempting to play this fast, uh, it works a lot better if I start with an upstroke. Um, so just start with an upstroke and then do 100% up and down. some variations around this and how can you start to improvise around with this kind of pattern because that's the whole idea right and uh, well one way uh, would be I'm sure you've noticed that I, I've kind of ended all the fast phrases with the uh, with the double stop that's a really cool way to end you know to end the phrase so that's an obvious